Hello and thank you for visiting Rebuilder in a Box. Today we're going to be doing the Honda Mitsuba Starter, number SM-71002. If your number doesn't match exactly, it doesn't matter. This fits kit number 06971. which is common on 06 to 08 TSX with the 2.4 liter. The 08 CSX Acura with the 2.0 liter. 2006-2007 Accord with 2.4. 2011 and some years after Civic with the 2.0. 2008 and some years after Element with the 2.4. These applications are guidelines. It's not really severely important that your car matches up with that application data. All these Mitsubas are similar and they're all gonna take very similar kits. This is just a good look at this one. You can see the back ear is a little bit thicker then the bottom one and the ignition switch plugs into a rectangular fitting with a clip on the top and there's a harness bracket in that configuration right there very simple and basic tools we're going to be using today screwdriver 5 16 socket ratchet channel locks or pliers, a hammer, and a wire toothbrush. We picked one out today that was a little bit on the rusty side. So in case yours is rusty, this will be some tips and hints on how to get it apart. We want to apply some rust bust on the bottom where the threads are visible, on the sides, and on the top. Same way with here. Then what we're going to do is take our hammer and lightly tap on the thread. Apply a little bit more. Wait about five or ten minutes and then take the bolts out. We're going to put a little bit of heat on this one. Tap on the back plate. We're taking our pair of pliers and pull the armature out. After the nose cone is cooled, we're going to hold on to the housing. and tap off the aluminum, hold on to the rubber grommet,
Here we have armature, magnet housing, and drive end assembly. You can see on this one, it was due for a replacement. You can see how the brushes are down way low. So this would be a good time to inspect the armature. Very seldom do you see bad ones. But well, we're going to look at this closely. All the way around and make sure that all the bars are there. They're going to be dark from carbon tracking and dust. We want to make sure that the starter has not been used so long past its time of bad brushes that the commutator has holes burned in it. As long as you can see copper all the way around, you're good to go. Also, if you really want to get over efficient, you can take an ohm meter and make sure that it's open from here to here. There should be no continuity from the copper to the shaft or the body. The body and the shaft have continuity, but the copper commutator is insulated. Let's take the rubber grommet off. Just peel this back. And take the rubber grommet off. Now this metal plate on the inside of the aluminum housing, we want to take that out of there. And this one is unusually rusty. So you don't have to worry about having to, uh, I mean 99% of them are not this bad. But we wanted to show you one that was a little bit corroded in case you do run into it. So normally you wouldn't have to, to do that, put some rust bust down in there. But we're going to do that and let it set for a minute because we want to get that out of there and that's a good way to do it. Now we're going to focus for a second on this push on star washer keeper. Um, we want to get that off there. Grab it with your channel locks. If you got a pair of needle nose pliers, grab that and pull up on it. It's just a piece of plastic in the center and you're not going to be reusing it. So just get it off there by whatever means necessary. Then we're going to take the little spring clip and get the copper washer out of the way. Then we're going to kind of hold it upside down and just start tapping until it falls out. Now this particular one here, the one gear fell out too, but we're going to take those off anyway. Those three come out. And then the middle piece comes off. Now we're faced with getting the plastic ring gear out. And you have to do this on something that's going to catch the three little springs that are located underneath this because when you get this out they're going to fall out so you want to use um, 
A sheet would be perfect, an old sheet, a, uh, a big towel. Um, we just use a rag. Um, at the very least, you'd have to have a newspaper or something. Don't try not to use like cardboard because the springs can hit and then these three little springs you, you, you don't want to lose. So already we've taken the planetaries and the centerpiece out of this. And what you do is get, find in your toolbox a couple of sockets that are roughly the same height and set them so that this is right about like that. And what we're gonna do is tap down. And that's what's gonna happen. Here's the three little springs. Inside this is a centerpiece that came out of there. This is the valley side, this is the high side. The valley side is the part that fits up into the spring. And the stem, we're going to be using a new stem, but just as a point of interest, it slides in there. One side's rounded, or two sides are two sides are rounded, two sides are flat, and it, it slides in either way. Sometimes this little gray keeper can come out. Usually not on this particular model. Some of the other models, it's not in there tight at all. It falls right out, so you have to keep an eye on that. But on this particular model, it, it's locked in, so you don't have to worry about it. If you have an old cake pan like this, this is a good time to drill a couple holes in it and use it to wash things up. Because what we're going to do is wash everything in mineral spirits and then finish washing with Dawn and water. So in review, the parts that we have here, the brush holder and the rubber grommet, which are going to be discarded because that's what comes with the kit. The three little coil springs, best thing you can do is stick them to a magnet and then take them off one at a time when you're ready to reassemble. We have the sun gear, the three planetary gears, the spinner in the center that the planetary gears go on, the bolts, the magnet housing, the armature, the drive-in assembly, and the back plate. This is what the wire brush is for. We have to go through and get all of the rust off as much as we can, especially on the outer housing. If you have a wire wheel on a, mounted on a grinder, that's a great thing. If you have a uh, wire wheel that goes into a drill, this would be a great time to use it. So what we're going to do with the commutator and the armature after it's done washing up, we're going to take 80 grit sandpaper or some scotch Bright and clean all the arc off the commutator so that you got a nice, clean, shiny surface. Okay, what we're going to do is go through each part after we've cleaned it and explain to you pretty much how it works and exactly what we did to it to make it ready for reassembly. First, I want to tell, show you the three products that we're going to be using lubricant-wise when we put this back together. Just white lithium grease, some plain 10W40 or any kind of motor oil. And we use, and you don't have to use, uh, Marvel Mystery Oil. You don't have to have that, but it certainly makes it work a lot better if you do have that. 
So first of all, let's take a look at the armature. We used a um, type of a varnish on there, tinted ignition sealer, sprayed down with the whole thing, and then sanded the commutator with 80 grit or um, some Scotch Brite, and then we took a uh, pocket screwdriver and cleaned out the bars. There's only 25 of them, so you just go through, and if there's any gunk or debris down inside those bars, get that out of there, and then give it one more quick sand so that it, the commutator is ready to go. And you have to, uh, you're also going to want to sand a little bit of the shaft on both ends, especially if you did use tinted ignition spray. You can use any kind of paint on that. It's not really important that you use tinted ignition spray or insulating enamel, but uh, basically what you want to do is just keep rust off of the lamination area. So that's what we did with that. The magnet housing, we just uh, got rid of the rust on the outside. In this case, we used uh, a bead blaster. So if you have a bead blaster, then be sure and use compressed air to get all the sand back out of it. Tap on it, and then finish getting the rest of the sand out of it because you, you definitely don't want a leftover couple pieces of sand getting down into the gearbox. But anyway, any type of enamel spray for that. And we did it inside and out. Also, it's going to be a good idea. Take a piece of sandpaper. Or your wire brush. And get it down to bare metal. Get it down to bare metal all the way around and then take some white lithium grease and go across that on the very top. That is a ground path because this contacts it and that's where it gets a ground to the body. So we're going to do that on both sides but most importantly is this side here could do it up inside a little bit and then use the white lithium grease to keep any future corrosion off. Uh, the back plate we bead blasted and um, what we're going to do is put a drop of motor oil down inside it and then just a small amount of white lithium grease. The plunger, we want to get oil on the outside of it so that it moves freely up and down the inside track of the uh, drive-in housing and we want to get a couple drops of oil on the inside of it all the way around on the spring the center spinner plastic piece we're going to get a little bit of oil on that And now for the gear setup, what we're going to do, and watch closely please, on observe how much white lithium grease did I use. Because I'm not going to pack it all down in there. 
I'm just going to track it across lightly so that you can see that it's not packed into the bottoms of the gear. Just a light track because if you get too much, um, it will, you can get hydrolock. These three gears, we're going to use pretty much the same technique. Don't work it down in there. Just give it a light coat. Okay. Now this piece we're going to put oil on the center part. And you'll notice if you look really closely, you'll notice that this gear on the one side has a little bit of a protrusion. So one side's perfectly flat and the other side you can see that bushing on the inside sticking out just a little bit. That's the side that goes up. So we're gonna set that down in there and then place all three of these in with the gear side I mean with the bushing side up and this is the part where we're going to put one or two drops of Marvel mystery oil down on the center part of the gears so that it's just on top of it and it'll go down in on its own. Like I said before, you, you don't have to have this, but it certainly really and truly does work a lot better and draw less amps when you do use that stuff. Okay, in prepping the drive-in housing, we're gonna want a screwdriver to work the oil down into this spline down in here. It's a curved spline down at the bottom and as that center piece gets shoved in and out from sucking this plunger down in there, this is a magnetic coil when you turn your ignition switch on. It energizes this coil and pulls this thing down in there. Then that's what shoves the Bendix out. Simultaneously, it also closes the contacts in there. But anyway, what we want to do is get a decent amount of motor oil down on that spline and work it back and forth four or five times so that it gets all the way down to the bottom of the spline. Also we want some oil on the shaft. When we cleaned this all up and painted it there was a little bit of paint that oversprayed onto that shaft so we took our wire toothbrush and got it off. So anyway, we also need some oil on the inside diameter where this thing travels back and forth. So we got that done. Then we're ready to move on to some white lithium grease applications. It's important to get white lithium, a thin layer, along the inside of this radius where the brush holder fits down in because we want a good ground path at that point. Also, this isn't the right mounting bolt but you know what it looks like if you took this off. The bolts that go through here, we want to be sure and clean those up very very efficiently and take some white lithium grease and put it on the underside and some on this right here. All 
All right, we're ready to uh, open up this part of the kit here. We got the stem, star washer, and the spring. The star washer, spring, and the uh, contact we'll just put aside momentarily. Um, this we're going to be using. What we're going to do is um, get these three springs and we have to where they go is they set down in to these three holes here and there and there so the way to keep them down in there a good way of course we're going to use our trusty white lithium grease so put a little bit of white lithium grease on all three of those springs and then set them down in those three holes and when you set your plunger down in there these three divots on the outside of it are going to sit down on those springs so you use this piece right here stick the stem in it you'll see the two flat sides that go in there so we're going to set that down on the spindle not forgetting that this goes in there first with the valley side up and then this is going to line up with the square part and just set it down in there so that it goes right on those springs and all you have to do is just look down in there to make sure that those springs are sitting on those pegs like they should because sometimes it takes a little bit of jostling around but once they all get on there it'll stay in place pretty well now looking at this piece which goes on there next oh great <laughs> by the way if you have a vise a two jaw vise this this would be a great place to use it But anyway, um, we're going to take this off the rubber grommet just to get it out of the way. And notice how the springs are up. And that's because what we're going to do is load this down into the nose, letting the stem come up through the hole. Then later on, we're going to get the commutator down inside the brushes and then push the springs down so that the brushes are loaded onto the comm. Okay, we got this in a little bit more of a secure spot. Next, we're going to put on the gear housing. Tap that down in there a little bit. And then we're going to put this on. And you want to get that in there securely. If you have to use a screwdriver and tap it down in a little bit, uh, that's okay. But it should sit down in the recess. There's a look at the gear assembly all the way down inside the drive-in housing notice the space right there here's a look at the brush holder assembly down into the gear the drive-in housing 
Notice the little lip right there. It's all the way down in. Okay, now I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit of grease on this spindle gear. And what I'm gonna do is go around and we use this, but you can use a pocket screwdriver to get it down in between the brushes. And just go around and do one at a time. You don't have to push on it at all once you get them all out of the way. And then we can push the springs down. So we're going to push the springs down and then go around and check each, all four of the copper wires that go into the brushes. And we want to move them away from the commutator. You don't have to worry about getting them too far out because they're not going to short out on anything. The hot ones are kept inside this plastic retainer so they can't short out as far as outward goes but they can short out as far as inward goes so we don't want the armature to, to in any way possible be able to rub. Now we're ready to put this stuff on. The copper disc, the laminated part or the perforated part goes down. It, that's what makes contact with the contacts on the inside of the brush holder. You can do this before you put the armature in. It doesn't matter. First the copper disc goes on, then the spring, and then the keeper. The easiest thing to uh, get that keeper on there is to use a quarter inch socket. You can push it on with your thumbs. You just don't want to go too far with it. There's a little groove that it goes into. And that's about how far down on there it goes, just so that the teeth are into that groove. Here's a close-up shot of the groove I was talking about. The teeth on the internal star go right onto that. Okay, now this is a necessary step. We're using in this case, DevCon, five minute epoxy, two part epoxy. And you just need a little tiny minute amount. Uh, you can use 3M or Gorilla Glue or whatever two part epoxy, five minute dry time we recommend um, that you can get. But this is a necessary step to do this. And we're going to put just a drop of it right on the top of that stem so that it runs down onto the star washer and gives it just a little bit of a extra holding power so that it can't come off. And 
And like I said, you don't have to use DevCon. You can use whatever kind you have, as long as it is a five minute, as long as it is a uh, fairly quick dry epoxy. And uh, then we're ready to put this grommet back on here. And put the housing on. Goes on it. And you have to hold your finger. It's a little bit tricky, but really not. Uh, hold your finger on the center of this so that the armature don't get sucked up when you're putting the housing on. You'll notice the little lineup pin. Set that down in there. And then we're going to put the lid on. By the way, here's a close up look at the clear epoxy going down onto the stem and what happens is when you turn your key those plungers that we just rebuilt suck down into the nose cone and pulls that contact down and then uh, this is hot all the time so it connects that to the starter so we're going to put the through bolts in now it's a really good idea to take some white lithium grease and put it on the threads. Now the open side where you can see the Bendix is over here so it's pretty common that the harness holder goes opposite of that. So we're just going to get those a little bit snug. Tap it around. And then finish tightening them up. And we're ready to test it. Alright, we're ready to test. Here we have a regular alligator clip with a short piece of number 12 wire. Sticking that back in there. And then the hot lead, you'll notice we've put dielectric grease or white lithium grease all around that post and on the bottom nut. This, these are regular jumper box leads. Red one goes on there and the black one goes on the ground where we cleaned off a spot. Be careful to put, depending on what jumper box you got and how the clamps are made, you're going to want the side, one side's got continuity and the other side might not. So clamp the side with the cable going to it, to the ground. And we're going to hold on to it, keep our fingers away from the Bendix. let it run for a minute. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a small tool and tap on it while it's running to loosen things up. And being on the back bushing sometimes it gets a little off center and you need to tap on it just to get it centered and running smooth. But as long as you hear RPM achieved that's similar to that, that, that sound, you're good to go. The Bendix, on this particular, on this type, they don't come out all the way. But as long as you see it kicking out a little bit, you're good.
see it's not really coming out all the way. But as long as you can see it move forward, you're good to go. And you're ready to uninstall, to install. One tip for installation. Be sure and clean up your battery cable with a piece of sandpaper and that goes right here. Be sure and clean that up both sides. Take some dielectric grease and smear it on both sides of that connector. And you're ready to put it on. Thanks for watching.